In the last lesson, you completed your informative process speech, and then you started prepping for your researched informative speech. In this lesson, you will be delivering your researched informative speech and then preparing for your persuasive speech, which will be the final speech of our session. Congratulations! I know it's, it feels like a lot, but you all are pushing through and persevering, so keep up the good work. I just wanted to take a couple of minutes to walk you through some aspects of this lesson. And as I'm walking you through them, if you need to, pause this video and you can feel free to call if you have any questions or you can email me as well. If you're on the Claremont campus, stop on by. I'd be happy to see you and help you. So to begin this lesson, you'll see the recording guidelines and then you'll see the research informative speech guidelines. These are the guidelines that were given to you in the, in the previous lesson to prepare you for actually executing your delivery and then submitting your recording to this lesson. So again, this particular speech, we're adding in some new elements. They'll, they'll be the research-based elements. So um, you'll want to make sure that you have at least three oral citations stated throughout your speech and these research materials that you use need to be documented, reputable, and retrievable pieces of research. Um, you're only allowed to use two internet sources and those are really the dot com sort of websites. So if you're going to be using an electronic book or magazine that won't count against you. You'll also be incorporating a visual aid and you had an opportunity to incorporate those in your process speech. So you're going to continue to refine those skills of visual audio aids for this speech as well. And then go ahead and disregard evaluating your, or it says evaluating your performance. Don't disregard that. You will evaluate your performance. Um, sorry, I misspoke there. I hope that wasn't too confusing. So this particular speech is going to be worth more than the past because we're incorporating those research-based elements in there. So um, you want to make sure that, again, three different separate documented reputable and retrievable pieces of research need to be included in your speech in the body in some sort of form of support. When you've recorded, you're going to upload your recording to YouTube. Please make sure that your YouTube link is set to public and unlisted. And then you'll just copy and paste that link into the Dropbox provided for you. Again, this speech will be due by 11.59 p.m. on Sunday. And then you'll see the guidelines for the outline and the references. This particular outline is worth more than the past outline because you're including those references in there. So make sure that they're documented in APA format if you have any questions about that, go to the previous lesson, go to the feedback that I gave you in that APA reference list activity and cross check your work. Of course, you can always ask me too if, you, if you're uncertain. Um, so make sure you submit that to the Dropbox by Sunday, 11.59 p.m. Then you're going to take a couple minutes and evaluate yourself and you'll just open the file and you can feel free to write right on this evaluation sheet. Um, you can just type your name in there. And then you'll grade each of the performance criteria, and then identify three areas that you thought you did well and three areas that you would like to improve upon. And you'll write those three to five areas here on um, your evaluation sheet. Save it to your computer or your USB, and then submit it to the Dropbox by Sunday, 11.59 p.m. Then you're going to turn around and you're going to start to engage in creating your persuasive speech by reading about different persuasive elements in chapters 16 and 17. As an additional learning tool, I've placed the PowerPoints in there. And then right away, you're going to test your comprehension by taking the 10 question multiple choice question quiz for chapter 17 and chapter 18. And then to help you with methods of persuasion, I ask that you view the sample 
video that discusses what ethos, pathos, and logos are. And it's using real life examples of logic and reasoning, emotion, and credibility. And then I placed in here an example speech using ethos and pathos in particular. Um, and then to help you with identifying different types of persuasive speeches, I have this worksheet that I want you to complete. So if we'll take a look at that, put your name in at the top, and then you're just simply going to attempt to identify the type of persuasive speech and the specific pattern of organization that's used in the following specific purpose and thesis statements. Um, place your answers in the uh, spaces provided. So let's do this first one together. Okay, so to persuade my audience that the national sales tax should be adopted to help reduce the national debt. The thesis is a national sales tax should be adopted to help, produce the na uh, help reduce the national debt. Right there with this information that's provided, if we look at the top, this is a question of policy because we're attempting to change a policy. Right, so then here I would put type of persuasive speech, question of policy, and then pattern of organization. My choices are problem solution, problem cause solution, comparative advantage, Monroe's motivated sequence. Um, based upon the information provided, I would identify this question of policy as a problem solution. So you'll, you can answer the next, um, there are six altogether, so the next five. Just identify, based upon the specific purpose in the thesis, what type of persuasive speech it should be, fact, value, or policy, and then identify the proper pattern of organization. This particular worksheet is worth 12 points. Plug in your responses, save it to your computer or your USB, and then submit to the Dropbox titled Types of Persuasive Speeches and Patterns of Organization Activity. Again, that will be due by Sunday, 11.59 p.m. And then you're going to get a little bit of practice using logos, pathos, and ethos. So I'll open up this worksheet. And here you're going to watch these commercials. And then based upon the commercial, starting with the Volkswagen commercial, you want to, after you watch it, identify how ethos is being used. And ethos is credibility. And credibility for this particular example is really focusing on the product of Volkswagen. And then how is logos or logic and reasoning being used? And then how are they using emotion? And then, so you want to identify the how. Don't, don't lead with the what, how. Show me, explain how this commercial is using these methods of persuasion. And then here it asks you how com the commercial is compelling. So I don't need an answer like the commercial was not compelling. I want you attempt to critically analyze the commercial and go, they were attempting to be compelling by, so we don't really need, it's not an opinion based question, it's more of an inference question. So based upon your best guess statements of what you know, what you've read about, combining that, understanding ethos, pathos, and logos, how was the commercial compelling? So there are going to be three different commercials that you're looking at doing the same thing. How, identifying how ethos, pathos, and logos is being used and how the commercial is compelling. Next, you'll save that to your computer or your USB, and then you'll submit to the Dropbox titled Logos, Pathos, Ethos Learning Activity. And again, that'll be due on Sunday by 11.59 p.m. After that, you're going to read through the Research Persuasive Speech Guidelines. This speech will be due on Friday, August 3rd, because August 3rd is our final day of the summer session. So we've been turning things in on Sundays, but because Friday is our last day of the summer session, that speech needs to be in no later than 11.59 p.m. on Friday. So read through those guidelines and read through the audience analysis for the research persuasive speech. You'll need to do that for this um, 
for this speech as well. Your original post of your question should be submitted to the discussion board by Saturday. That hasn't changed. Saturday, July 28th. Um, for this particular audience analysis, you will need a total of four questions to assessing the audience's knowledge, to ad assessing the audience's interest. You want to ask a variety of questions and um, like all of the other audience analysis that we have been doing this summer, your original post again will be due on uh, Saturday and that's going to be worth four points, um, two points Sorry about that, I misspoke. You have four questions, which will each be worth two points apiece, totaling eight. Um, originally it said four, I, that was my fault, I'm sorry. So um, post those to the discussion board. And then the replies, there needs to be at least four replies that you give to your fellow classmates. And each of those replies will be worth two points, totaling eight. So that whole discussion will be worth 16 points complete that, um, review the guidelines for the outline that you will be turning in, and then um, you can view the example, my grading rub rubric, and then the last activity that I have you do in this lesson is asking you to watch the sample persuasive speech and then critique it. And this critique, you'll just write on the form, it's like all the other critiques that we've been doing. Just put your name on there and then you are going to grade the performance criteria on that zero through five scale. And then from there, you'll um, identify three areas that you thought the speaker did well on, three areas that you thought the speaker could improve upon, save it to your computer or your USB, and then you'll submit it to the Dropbox by Sunday 11.59 p.m. And then you'll see the reminders for everything that's due within this lesson. And then congratulations, you've completed the lesson and you have one more to do. And then you're done. Again, as you work through this, please feel free to email, call, or if you're on the Claremont campus, stop on by. I'm happy to help any way that I can. Keep up the good work, scholars.